In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk? And he arose and went away to his house. But when the crowd saw it, they were struck with fear and glorified God who had given such power to men. In today's gospel, Christ performed two miracles. One, the lesser miracle, the healing of the body, performed as proof of the greater, of the hidden miracle, the healing of the soul, the forgiveness of sins. For as St Chrysostom says, by how much the soul is better than the body, by so much is it a greater thing to forgive sin than to heal the body. This is an undeniable truth. And yet, yet those in the world look with scorn and ridicule upon the tribunal of penance, upon the priest as physician. But who can deny from the words of Christ that the priest is truly a physician? That by the words of absolution he restores the soul of the sinner to health? Who can deny that by his admonitions, by his remedies, the priest acts truly as a physician? For which is easier? To say, your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, arise and walk? The world is so entrenched, so obsessed with the flesh, with the temporal, and with seeking its own pleasure that all the value is placed upon the body. It's the pinnacle, it is the higher. Health of the soul, no concern. Health of the body, everything. Money, investments, time, energy, worries, anxieties, all given towards the body. Doctors, the physicians of the body are held in high esteem by the world. Think for a moment how sought after, how revered a doctor would be that could bring man back to life. They could heal him always from the worst of maladies. No limits. The world would be struck with fear. They would glorify such a man. And yet Christ and his priests the physician of the soul. They are mocked, held in contempt. For the healing of the soul is a mere fiction to those who refuse to believe in the hidden miracle, in the forgiveness of sin. And whilst undoubtedly this ridicule, this scorn is not held by faithful Catholics, think to yourself, are you not often more solicitous for the body than for the soul? Worrying more about the health of your body than your soul? More watchful for the things that harm the body than those that harm the soul? Fear ye not them that kill the body and are not able to kill the soul? Our Lord never spoke idle words. He was warning us this attitude exists this perversion exists and it lives and thr thrives in the world. We see evidence of it every day. Those who value the body more than the soul. And we must be on guard to protect ourselves from this same disease. To not allow this leprosy to infect our souls. Now imagine such a doctor who could heal. He could heal all men from any malady, from any disease and cancer, no matter how grave or light, no matter how long they had been infected by it, no matter the grip it has had over their lives. Imagine there is a doctor in the world that can do this. And he presents no obstacle to man in their healing. Anyone rich or poor can come to him and be healed. He's always available, always ready to heal the body. 
think how quickly man would flock to him. Without delay, no excuses, no maybe later, no maybe next time. No, they would go immediately and with haste to be healed. Think how man would speak about this physician. Think how he would speak. Think how you would speak of him. Think of the awe and the wonder. And yet, do you think this way about the sacrament of penance? About the priest who in the place of God forgives sins? Heals the soul, brings it back to life through the grace of God? Are we struck with fear? Do we glorify God who has given such power to men? Let us all now take to heart the wise counsel of Tertullian who says, When you withdraw from confession, think of hell, which penance has extinguished for you. And imagine first the magnitude of the punishment that you may not doubt as to the remedy which you have received. Imagine first the magnitude of the punishment that you may not doubt as to the remedy which you have received. It, was a, it is a terrible thing to see a Catholic who takes for granted the sacrament of penance, who runs from it, who hides from it, simply does not value it as he ought. A soul that is sick but refuses to seek its medicine. And worse, a soul that is dead but refuses to seek its resurrection. The miracle in today's Gospel the words of Christ, the response of the crowd, these all occurred nearly 2,000 years ago. And think of how many men in that time have lived, have heard these words, have heard of this, these miracles, have been taught these lessons. Think how many men still persisted and still persist in the pursuit of the flesh over the soul, of the temporal over the eternal. Now, it may have occurred nearly 2,000 years ago, we may have heard it recalled many times, but sin is strong and it blinds man. Sin deafens the ears, sin covers up the lessons we once learned. And so we must call to mind this gospel often. We must fight against sin, the great blindfold of mankind. And we must be solicitous, not for the body, but for the soul. For as St Thomas Aquinas says, In the life of the body a man is sometimes sick, and unless he takes medicine he will die. Even so in the spiritual life a man is sick, on account of sin. For that reason he needs medicine so that he may be restored to health. And this grace is bestowed in the sacrament of penance. Father St Gregory the Great says, A crime does not vanish without vengeance, for either the sinner contritely punishes it himself, or God punishes it avengingly. And so I want to touch upon this point of reparation. We should rejoice when our body suffers. We should rejo rejoice when it is denied pleasure, comfort and satisfaction. For it is a blessing, an opportunity from God to make reparation for sin. To pay that temporal punishment that is still due for our sins. Whilst the sacrament of penance remits the guilt of sin together with its eternal punishment, it does not cancel the temporal punishments due to sin. Every illness you endure, every cross you bear, it is a just punishment for your sins. It is satisfaction made to God through the merits of Christ. Christ. 
As the Council of Trent says, Man has not been into glory, but all our glorying is in Christ, in whom we live, in whom we merit, in whom we satisfy, bringing forth fruits worthy of penance, which from him have their efficacy. By him are offered to the Father, and through him are accepted by the Father. And so I do not exaggerate when I say that we should rejoice in our sufferings and our crosses, for these are such amazing opportunities to make reparation for our sins, to pay that temporal debt which we owe to God, that divine justice demands. So bear your crosses patiently, bear them for love of God and offer them to him in reparation. Every contradiction, every pang of hunger and thirst, every sting of cold, every impulse of pain and suffering. Offer it all, big and small, significant and insignificant. Offer it all to God, united to the merits of Christ, in reparation for your sins. And seek to do penance for your sins, that you may blot out the temporal punishments due to them. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving, corporal works of mercy. And I will leave you with this quote by St John Bosco, who says, Do you want to become saints? Here is the secret. Confession is the lock. Confidence in your confessor is the key. This is how you open heaven's gates. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.